Okay, welcome back to a new math tutorial. In this video, I would like to explain uh, what further things you can do with complex numbers compared to what I have shown in the previous video. Yeah? So now you learned how to add up complex numbers, how to do multiplication, division, and so on. And now I would like to tell you how you can convert complex numbers into from the uh, Cartesian coordinate form into the polar coordinate form because this is a typical exercise which could be given in any kind of uh, mathematics lecture or also in school depending whether you are learning complex numbers or not so I think this is a very important topic and uh, yeah due to this reason I like I would like to cover that so um, we have here in this uh, exercise three parts with three complex numbers and all these three numbers we want to convert into polar coordinates and this is the standard form how to write down complex numbers the yeah general form the Cartesian form usually it's called um, and the reason for this becomes, I think, clear when uh, when you take a look at the um, yeah at the uh, at the so-called Gauss plane, yeah, which I will draw here, um, which is just a Cartesian coordinate system with the x-axis defined as the real part of a complex number uh, R e z, and the y-axis called uh, or the y-axis is the imaginary part of the complex number um, image uh, I m z. So um, when you when you tr uh, write when you draw the graph in this way, and as I said last time, you can uh, draw or you can uh, define any complex numbers as uh, x plus i y, where x is the real part of the complex number and y the imaginary part. Yeah, so you can draw now uh, these two values x and y inside this uh, inside this Gauss plane. So what you get at the end is actually an arrow, yeah, uh, a vector, so to say, uh, to a certain point, uh, which has the coordinate uh, x and y, or a real part of z and re imaginary part of, of z. So um, yeah, this, this makes it then uh, easy. So let's maybe um, uh, draw this um, yeah, two, two triangles that you get here. Um, and then, of course, when you draw it in such a way, uh, then you have a radius here. Uh, let's let's draw it in green, yeah, which is the absolute value of that complex number. So uh, this is our complex number here, z. Uh, so this is the absolute value r, and then we can also, of course, um, define an angle here, this angle phi. And when you have these two values, r and phi, then when you remember how to calculate uh, things in polar coordinates, then you have everything which you need in order to yeah, uh, to write this um, complex number in, in the polar coordinate form. And this we will do now. Um, so um, we we have here uh, our x plus i, y. Yeah, so in polar coordinates, the x coordinate can be represented with cosine phi and the y coordinate can be represented with sine phi. So what we can write is now uh, cosine phi plus i sine phi. But of course, this would only wor work for a vector with the length of one. But since we have here length of r, we have to multiply this also with r. And this is then our general uh, form of writing uh, this down. And uh, yeah, then the only things which we have to determine are r and phi. Now, these are the two, two parameters to, which are completely defining such a complex number. And the question is how we do that. So um, the, the radius, the absolute value, uh, this is the easiest part. Um, so um, here we can write r equal, and then we have already learned how to calculate the um, absolute value of a complex number. So this is actually the complex number itself times the complex conjugated. And when you calculate this, yeah, so actually this would be r squared. So we have to um, we have to uh, actually uh, take the square root of that. So uh, this would be the square root of x square plus y square. Now you can easily uh, confirm this when you take these um, yeah, uh, calculation laws that we have previously derived into account. Yeah, so this is simple, um, but now it can, we come to the angle. And uh, here um, we can we can take into account that um, this is our imaginary part here actually this red red side here I m of z and then 
when you remember uh, trigonometry, then uh, maybe you remember this uh, arcus, um, or this this tangent function, which is actually defined as tangent of this angle phi here, given as the this side here, the imaginary part of uh, of of our complex number, uh, divided by uh, this side here, which is our real part of complex numbers of the complex number of the complex number actually yeah? so this is uh, tangent phi equal to this fraction here and if we want to have then the angle phi of course we only have to calculate the inverse tangent which means uh, arcus tangent of um, imaginary part of z divided by the real part of z so it's actually simple yeah and in order to practice this a little bit i would now go through these uh, exercises which i have written down here so um, in the first step we will make a new page and uh, we define this here uh, as a and this is given as z equal to one plus i and then now we can draw our coordinate system maybe i can try to make it a little bit more beautiful um, so we have here uh, again the real part of z and the imaginary part of z and here we can draw our one two three one two three and also in negative direction we can write here minus one minus two minus three minus one minus two minus three and yeah, then we can uh, uh, our then we can draw this number uh, by taking the real value into account, which is one. Yeah, and the imaginary part is also one. So we can uh, this is very simple. So we can now draw our um, yeah maybe we can do it in red. So we can actually draw our uh, complex number z in such a way, and then we can also uh, write down this angle phi and our radius here um, r, uh, which we have to calculate now. So the radius, um, as I said, this is simple. So this is just given as the square root of x square, which is one plus y square, which is also one. And this gives then the square root of two. Now we could also now write it in decimal form here, but I would like to keep it here uh, in the algebraic form, uh, square root of two. And now the angle, uh, this, uh, this is a little bit uh, more tricky, but um, I think we can, uh, we can easily uh, calculate this here for this case. Um, in principle, what you would have to do, we would have to calculate our phi, which is equal to uh, the arcus tangent of the imaginary part, which is one, uh, divided by the real part, as we have seen before, which is also one. Uh, so the arcus uh, tangent of one would be given as uh, pi over four. Yeah? Or when you convert this into um, into uh, degree, then this is of course 45 degree. And this makes sense yeah? because uh, our vector is exactly dividing this uh, 90 degree angle into two halves, so to say. So um, we go one in this direction and one in this direction. So there's no other possibility except that the angle is 45 degree. So in this case, we even don't need this formula, but it's nice to see that actually it works and the same result uh, turns out. So now we have our R and we have our phi. So this is uh, actually everything which we need in order to just represent our complex number here in polar form. Yeah, so this was easy. Um, now we come to a little bit more tricky case, um, which is that one here. Um, so we will uh, come to part B, which is given as Z equal to minus two plus th uh, three times I. So again, we can draw that and I will try to make this a little bit bigger. Um, because later we, I want to explain a few things with that. So um, we have here our one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus one, minus two, minus three. And now we go um, two in in negative direction, yeah, in, in this direction here, real part and um, 
three up words, which is here. So what we can do is now um, uh, getting this this um, this rectangle here, and then we can draw our uh, complex number like that. Uh, this is then our z. And now uh, we have a problem because our angle uh, phi is now given as this one, uh, phi. But when we use this um, uh, formula that I have given before, so the, the radius I will not calculate now because this is simple. It would be just a square root of 4 plus 9, which is 13. So um, r would be square root of 13. This we can ignore. But the most problematic part is always the angle. So we can write here now uh, arcus tangent of, and then again this formula, the real part, uh, the imaginary part, sorry, 3 divided by the real part minus 2, uh, which gives the arc or which results in the arcus tangent uh, of, um, of minus 1.5. And if you calculate this, uh, you get as a value, I have done this before, 0.983. And again, it's difficult to imagine how it how this angle would look like. So what we can do, we can multiply it with 180 and divide it by pi uh, by pi, and this gives then an angle in degree. So this would be uh, 56.3 degree. So what we get now is uh, is a small angle and not a large one, as we can see here, which has to be larger than pi half, yeah, larger than 90 degree. So what we actually get here now is this angle here, um, this one, uh, which is uh, which we call maybe phi prime. And this is not what we want to have. We want to have phi. So when we have a complex number uh, where the real part is negative uh, and the imaginary part is positive, we cannot directly use this formula. Uh, we get our phi prime here. And if we want to calculate phi, uh, we actually have to calculate here 180 degree, so which means pi minus this angle phi prime that we got. Yeah? But not phi prime directly, uh, of course, um, because this is a negative value and we want to really calculate the difference between pi and the absolute value of phi prime. We have to write here pi minus uh, the absolute value of phi prime which means that this gives at the end, uh, when you do this calculation, uh, a value of 2.158. And this is again in degree 123.69 degree. So this is then really our angle phi that we have given here. And yeah, uh, the problem is, uh, of course, you can also have um, other cases. Yeah, so maybe we can use again another color, maybe green, uh, this light green. Um, or let's use purple, uh, where we have uh, other cases where we can have, for example, a negative real value and a negative imaginary value. Yeah, so our vector could maybe point into this direction. And then if we calculate the arcus tangent of imaginary part uh, divided by the real part, we would get actually um, we would actually get this angle here, yeah, uh, and uh, then again this would be phi prime, and in this case our angle phi would be then this 180 degree which is given already here plus phi prime and in this case the absolute value, yeah. So we have to then calculate pi plus the absolute value of phi prime. This is uh, for the case that um, both the imaginary and the real part are negative. And then we can of course have a, have a, th a fourth case yeah, where we have here a vector um, with a positive real part and a negative imaginary part. When you do this calculation of the arcus tangent, then again you get this angle here, yeah, phi prime. And um, I hope you can read this in a, in a, in a good way. So then in this case, uh, our angle phi that we want to calculate this full angle here from uh, from the x axis to this um, to the vector of this complex number would be then given as the full angle 2 pi minus the absolute value of phi prime. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can really read this. So I will maybe uh, choose another color here, gray and um, just write over that 2 pi minus phi prime. Yeah, and this is um, uh, 
these are all the four cases that you can have. Now, the first one we had already, this was easy. The second one we calculated now here. And the third and fourth one, you have to calculate either pi plus this absolute value or two pi minus this absolute value. So you can see it's actually very simple. And um, yeah, when you take all these cases into account, then in principle, there are a few special cases left. For example, this one here, yeah, where the complex number um, uh, z equal phi i, uh, five times i, I forgot the z, um, is, uh, has no real part. So what we can write now is uh, z, uh, z equal to five i. And now we want to draw this um, again in a Cartesian coordinate system. So um, the real part of z and the imaginary part of z, the real part does not exist, but we have here one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So what we have here is our uh, vector uh, z only uh, having a um, component in, in y direction. Yeah. And then the angle, of course, uh, would be again given here as uh, phi, the angle between this vector and the real, uh, the, the x-axis, the, the real part of that. And when we use our, or if we would use our formula now, phi equal uh, arcus tangent of the imaginary part of z divided by the real part of z, uh, we would have the problem that we have to write it in the form of uh, 5 divided by 0. And now you have a division by 0, which is not allowed. Yeah? So this does not work uh, at all. Um, and But this is also not necessary, because if we have such a case that the complex number z is only given by an um, imaginary part, then if this is a positive imaginary part like 5i, then of course you can immediately see that this angle phi is given as 90 degree or pi over 2. Uh, this is this one. And if you um, have one with a negative, uh, a negative uh, imaginary part in this direction, yeah, then of course um, the angle would be um, would be larger. Um, this would be actually that one here uh, plus this angle phi. So this means that um, our our full angle. Uh, would be then phi equal to 3 over 2 pi. Yeah, this is also very simple, or 270 degree. Yeah, so this would be, of course, 90 degree, and this would be um, 270 degree. And if you have only a real number, of course, without an imaginary part, then uh, this also gets quite simple. You have uh, either a vector only in x direction, then phi is equal to 0, or in the opposite direction, anti-parallel to the x direction, uh, which means that our phi would be 180 degree. But it's as, um, it's actually uh, the only part where you really have to take um, some math into account. The absolute value is always easy. In this case, the absolute value, by the way, uh, would be just um, would be just five because we have only one component. Yeah, five square plus zero square is five and then the square root of that of course yeah so this is quite simple um, and if you understand this methodology then i think you can really convert every kind of uh, complex number into the polar form um, and uh, of course now you could ask why this is important and later this will become important when we understand how the angle of uh, such a rotation that you have um, uh, correlates with uh, the exponential function with the yeah with e to the power i phi. Yeah? This this comes then in a later video, and I hope that you you like this way of explaining. I hope that you could understand something, and that now you are able to really convert any complex number into the polar form. Uh, yeah, if you if you like the video, uh, please hit the like button. As usual, uh, if you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe it, and uh, yeah, otherwise see you very soon for a new video.